They said that if they stayed in that camp, they would be killed. And things escalated very quickly. And it was at that point that the guards started to panic. What these women were telling us was very, very important. What you're being told needs to be documented, so you keep filming. This is a huge smuggling enterprise in a country where the state has broken. So the economic incentive for the Libyans who take part in it is huge. But because it is a massive criminal enterprise, because life is cheap, there's no real reason that anybody is going to put you on a boat, albeit a broken boat that may very well sink as soon as it gets offshore. It certainly won't get to Europe. The migrants and the smugglers work on the premise that the people will get picked up in the Mediterranean. But some people, they don't even get that far. It's a real challenge working in Libya. When you're there as a journalist, the first impression you get is there's not much of a structure here. Uh, it's somewhat of a free-for-all. It's quite hard getting things set up, getting access. We were constantly being pushed back, given false information at times, uh, and being led down blind alleys. Libya is under enormous amounts of political pressure from the European Union. So the Libyans are keen to show that they are dealing with the problem, but they acknowledge themselves that they don't have the money to deal with it. They don't have the tools to deal with it. So they'll take you and show you the conditions that people are living in. Ones we spoke to say that they are doing their best to treat these people in a dignified and humane manner but when you look inside those detention centers, they are anything but humane or dignified. Out of 200. 200 people in here. Yeah. It was a really desperate scene. The temperature inside those places is stifling. And it's horrendous. Whatever you think of the migrant crisis and whether or not these people should have made the journey to Europe in the first place, nobody should have to live like this. Conditions in here are absolutely dismal. It smells suffocatingly hot. More than 200 people in here. And between them, there's only one bathroom. In a room, full of so much despair. So long as I'm in focus, this story just sort of tells itself. Uh, I pretty much just have to hit record. We filmed during mealtime. We were told by the migrants that this was the only meal they got. The people who ran the detention center said that they were actually fed a number of times. They're given food in an enormous bowl that is the sort of thing you'd feed animals with. They're suffering, they're lethargic because they're not getting enough to eat. <coughs> Many of them are sick. How difficult is it to look after all these people? Very, 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 very difficult. They are trying to go to Europe. We, we keep them here safe to return to their countries. And are you being given help from Europe now? The not, Europeans not, uh, not as much as we need. Uh, Europe must do their part and help us. Alex and Jake were able to start peeling off and speaking to people without anyone listening in. It was a case of distracting one of the wardens. They saw us as a, as a window to speak to the world. The minute you start to speak to these people one on one, you start to hear nothing but desperation. People falling ev every day because of hunger, you know? We see brothers falling, falling down. We can't even help them. Every day, things get worse. Most of the people we spoke to said that they were not being well treated. They were being violated and abused routinely. This is prison. They treat us like criminals. You're surrounded by 
the sights and smell of people who were desperate, people who had nowhere to go, who, people who had no idea where their life was going and where they would end up. What will you do now? What, what will happen to you now? Are you... You know... We spoke to a large number of migrants who would tell us these stories of how they were abused, how they were beaten. And they are taking us to outside to walk. When we were walking, they are not paying us. So they're taking you and putting you to work? Yes. Every day, daily. Even now, also, we have some people, they are absent. They are died, they are alive, he doesn't know. They are taking outside. When they are come under here. So you're treated as slaves? Yes. They were targeted by militias and then taken to these detention centers because they were worth money as slaves. These people like animals, we are not being with them. We didn't kill anyone. We didn't take money for someone. We didn't do any crime. Yes, we are refugees. We came across sea here. They are arrest us. From the minute they leave home to the point of getting to Libya or trying to get to Europe, they are at constant risk of exploitation. The men and women in this detention center are separated. Hello. So we walked into the women's quarters, but it didn't look like great conditions. Through here. There were beds, there were places where they could sit. You didn't get the sense that it was awful. Things were quite calm to begin with. Please, sir, I can get up because I'm hurt. You're hurt? Yeah. Tell me what happened. They were three sisters and some other women in the group. Alex was sat down, started to ask them questions, and it was almost immediately. Where do you come from? I'm from Nigeria. And they just started to break down. I'm fed up. I'm fed up here, yeah, so I tried to escape. You tried to escape? Yeah. And Not what, only and what me. what happened? Not only me, they catch me back and I was treated badly. What happened to you? What, what did they do? Yeah, they flogged me, not only me. They accused the people in the camp of beating them. As you can see, it's because we are treated badly here. That is why we tried to escape. Her friends uh, and some of them were her family members started to show us where they claimed to have been beaten. It was totally surprising, but also really very affecting. The guards' interpretation of events was that nearby there is some military facilities that the women had tried to escape and run into. And when they were caught running into this zone, they were then detained and manhandled, and that's where the bruises and the, and the marks had come from. That's not what the women had said. They said that if they stayed in that camp, they would be killed. The mood quickly changed as soon as they started telling us their side of the story. The authorities and the guards who were with us very quickly got quite angry. And things escalated very quickly. And it was at that point that the guards, I think, started to panic. They wanted us to end the interview. We wanted to continue with the interview. And clearly, what these women were telling us was very, very important. We needed to hear it. What you're being told needs to be documented so you keep filming. Whilst they were arguing with Alex, I was able to move to another corner. I need to, I need to film. I need to film. I needed more pictures before we got out of there so that we could actually tell the story. So if any one of these girls has a problem... There was a point where the guards tried to call their bluff and said to them, well, if you're so upset, if you're so distraught, then leave. And they want to walk out. You're very happy to, to just take the bus. This group of women didn't know what to do. They knew that this was part of a game. They also knew that they actually had no way of getting anywhere. They had no money, they had no support, they had no one who could help them take them. They had no idea where they were necessarily and how to get home and what was home. <laughs> I stopped looking like I was filming, but I didn't see the need in actually uh, switching the camera off. 
It's become increasingly common now that when it's you're funny. filming sensitive situations around authority types in countries like Libya, you are often told to stop filming or don't film that. Memnoa, you know, forbidden, you can't film that. Uh, so you have to try and find ways between yourselves as a team of still trying to get those images. They're very important. We kept rolling so we saw kind of the dynamic between these groups of people. The women clearly very, very scared. The men running the detention center worried about what this would mean for them if their bosses saw that this had happened and wanted us out of there. They wanted us to take them from the center and get them out of there. But of course, you can't. You are powerless. You go in there, you hear their story, but that story doesn't end just because you've left. The Libyans say that they will eventually be repatriated and sent back to their country of origin, but you don't know what will happen to them. I think that's the fate that probably faces many thousands of people who are in those kinds of detention centers, men and women. We need to, I think, sometimes reflect the risks that they're taking in full knowledge of what the consequences could be, imprisonment, abuse, exploitation, even death, that they're still willing to take those risks because of how difficult life is in the countries that they are coming from. And unless you address it from that perspective, I think it's very unlikely that people's attitudes are gonna change and things will get better. As long as there is the pull of Europe, and as long as migrants think that there is a hope of getting and Libya is a chaotic place. There will always be this criminal enterprise and these smuggling gangs. So the problem will always continue.